So you might've seen my recent post on these eight different types of progress charts. On that post, one of the most popular chart types here was the calendar chart. We got a ton of feedback from people asking how to create that and modify it. So I have a previous video that it walks through that step by step. And this is part two in the series where we're gonna look at how to make the calendar chart interactive. We're also gonna look at how to format the previous and next months and also add a goals feature. All right, so jumping into Excel, here is our calendar chart that we created in the last video. Now, if you didn't see that last video, that's okay. You can watch this one first, see all the cool ways you can make this interactive and the different styling you can apply to it. And then you can go back and watch the previous video to learn how to build it. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, you don't necessarily need to build it out every time. You can just take any one of these sheets and move it into your own workbook and then plug in your data. And this file will be available for free download. And I'll put a link in the description below where you can grab that and follow along. And in that previous video, I explained what this calendar chart is and when to use it. And I'll just quickly recap that again in case you didn't see that previous video. So this is a month view calendar and for each day where we've completed a, a task or a goal it's highlighted in blue and of course you can change the color there but this is great for any type of habit tracking or progress tracking for both personal use and business use and in the previous video I explained some possible use cases there with daily sales goals, outbound calls, attendance and things like that but again I'm curious to know what you'll be using these charts for so you can leave a comment below and let us know. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make this chart interactive by adding a spin button to it or a button that allows us to change the months. So we're on the follow along sheet and this is essentially where we left off from the previous video. The first thing we're going to do is go over to the start date here. And in the previous video, I was typing in different start dates, but we actually wanna use a formula here instead to calculate the start date based on this month number. Now, this is a weird looking number you might not have seen before, 1484. That's essentially the number of months that have elapsed since the calendar starts, which is January 1st, 1900. That's when it starts in Excel. So I've already calculated that number, and this is just a hard-coded number here. And of course, this will change for you in the future, but we can use this as a starting point. And what we're gonna do is write a function right here, write a formula, I should say, using the date function. So we're gonna type equals date, tab into that. For the year, we're going to specify 1900, because again, that's when the calendar starts in Excel. I'm gonna type a comma. For the month, we're just gonna select this cell right here, and again, comma, and then and for the day, we're going to specify one because we always want the first day of the month uh, for our start date. So we'll hit enter there, and that's going to, again, return this date, which is August 1st, 2023, because 1,484 months have elapsed since January 1st, 1900. So now that we have this formula in here, we're going to go over to uh, the chart, and actually we're going to go up to the developer tab. And if you don't see the developer tab, you can right click anywhere on the ribbon and choose customize. And that's gonna bring up this window, and you just scroll down till you see developer. This is likely unchecked for you. Go ahead and check this box, and then hit OK. And that will put the developer tab here. And every time you open Excel, it will be available for you. On the developer tab, we're going to go to insert. And then under form controls, we're going to choose this spin button. So select that. That puts it in drawing mode. And we can just kind of draw this vertical rectangle here over the chart. And that'll create our spin button. Now, first, we need to uh, customize this. So we're going to right click that button and choose format control. And that'll bring up this window here. For the current value, we want this to match. So we're just going to type in 1484 for now just like that. Minimum value, we want a minimum value of at least one for the first month, which would be January 1st, 1900. Uh, incremental change, we'll leave that as one. And then cell link, we're gonna link this to the month number right here. So we're gonna link essentially the form control to that cell that contains the month number and hit okay. Oh, and I also turned off the 3D shading, totally up to you, but I turned that off, hit okay. And then click off the chart and you'll see we have these buttons here and we click on these. And when we click this, that's going to change the month number here, which is then this form is dependent on this month number. So that's gonna change the calculated start date, which then flows through all the way to our chart. So this makes it interactive and you can click up and down here. You can notice, maybe notice that that bottom arrow is a little bigger than the top one. And that's just a formatting thing. You might need to resize this to make it bigger or smaller for that to change. And then as again, as you click up and down here, the chart's now interactive and your users can cycle through the months. Next, we'll take a look at a few different styling options for the calendar chart. On the month only tab here, we essentially have a very similar chart. However, it only has the days displayed for the current month. As you notice in the previous one, if we go back to the original calendar chart here, even for the previous month and the next month, we have dates here in the uh, chart itself. And if you didn't want that and you only want to see the current month, you can use this style. So essentially what I did for this is I add an additional series
series here. So there's now columns I inserted here for the previous and next month. And here's the XY data. And this again uses a formula. And what it's doing is essentially saying if the date in this row is not in the current month, then we're going to display the X value from our current month column. If it is in the current month, we're just gonna display the NA error. And like I mentioned in the previous video, that NA error is going to not plot that data point on the chart. It's essentially going to leave it blank. That's what the NA error does. So we can use that to our advantage. So this is actually, then when we add this, so we'll select the chart here, go up to chart design, select data, and I added an additional series here for the previous next month, and that's just those X, Y values. And so we actually have the series plotted here, and we're gonna use that for the next chart that I'm gonna show. But for this chart, in order to just make it kind of disappear, I just changed those values. So if we go to the Format tab here, and then we hit the drop down here, and Series Previous Next Month, you can see these circles are displayed here. But if we hit Format Selection, all I did is we go into the formatting here and go into the Marker, the Marker Options. It's still the same marker type, and I actually increases size just a little bit over the other ones and then change the fill color to white. So the markers are still there. They're just white. So they're kind of overlapping the current month. Now you can do a lot of different, there's a lot of different ways you can come up with this. You could actually just uh, put NA errors here instead. But like I said, how we're going to use this in the next chart, if we jump over to the full calendar sheet, I'm using that same data, but now I've formatted it differently. So I've taken these labels. So I have this new series. I've added labels to those and those labels are a light gray text. So instead of not displaying these at all, this looks more like the typical calendar you'd see, especially the one in the Windows system settings. You have just light gray kind of labels here for the previous and next months, and then a dark gray or a black text for the current month. And then we also have two sets of date labels. So in the current month, we have the date labels. And again, this is added a new column and I'm using a formula here to determine if this date is in the current month. If it is, and it's gonna display that label. If not, it's just gonna display a blank. And then over here, it's essentially the opposite formula. So what we have then is two different series of data labels here that we're displaying, and we can change the text color on each of those. And then the other thing I did in this chart here is, if, again, we'll select the chart, go format, and then format. We're going to hit the drop down here for the complete color. And as you notice, there's there are, uh, circles, like outline circles, instead of circles that are filled in. And so for that, if we go over here to the marker, and then the fill, I've now changed it to no fill. Before it was a solid solid fill, now it's a no fill, and I've used a border. So solid line border, I beefed up the width a bit to 1.75, and so then we get that circle around the dates uh, where we've completed the goal or task. And again, that just gives it a different look or feel. So it's totally up to you on which style you use. This just gives it a different look that might be more appealing and a little bit easier to read. And finally, we have this weekly goals feature. Now, this is another enhancement to the chart, where in this case here, we're highlighting the entire week. If we've hit a goal, of five out of seven days in that week. Any five days where we've hit the goal or completed the task, in the week, it's going to highlight the entire week here. And so to do this, I'm gonna scroll over here to the right and I've added a few things. First of all, we have the goal number here and this can change. So if you want it six days out of the week or seven days out of the week or two days out of the week, you can just type that number in here. And this drives or is used in these formulas over here. So we're calculating the week number here uh, using the week number function and then the count of the total number of days completed in uh, that count right there for the week. And then essentially if it meets that goal, uh, if, or if it's greater than or equal to that goal number, then we're gonna display the X data, otherwise return the NA error. And so if we go back over to the chart, this is now another series. So we select the chart and uh, go to, well, we can go to chart design, select data, and then we have a goal series that we've added here with that XY data. And then it's just formatted with a line. So if we go to format, and then we go here to the goal, there it is. And then over here for our formatting, we formatted it with a line. So we've turned the marker off completely. I've turned the marker off and then just formatted it with a line. And we have this solid line. Uh, transparency is 50% and uh, the color right here is just this blue color. Of course, you can use any color you want and the width is 21 to make it a little bit wider than the dots there. Kind of about the same width as those dots or those circles. And so it highlights the entire uh, week when that goal 
is met. And I've also added some spacing here. You'll notice some blank spaces, and that's just so the line doesn't continue on down to the next uh, week if both of them meet the criteria. So that's just one potential use here. This may or may not be a use case for you, but I just wanted to show this as another way to enhance this chart further, and it might spark some ideas for some other goals or milestones you have within the month that you want to track as well to, again, just help promote those habits and that progress. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this series on creating the calendar chart. Again, if you missed the first part and you want to learn how to build out the chart, I'll put a link in the description below to part one of this series. I'm also curious to know how you'll be using those charts, so leave a comment below and let us know as well. And if you have any other questions or suggestions, let us know down in the comments too. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.